our cultural identity, who we are as Ulnu, is because of our relationship to Mother Earth. Our science, called traditional ecological knowledge, was done through generations of observation. This observation was carried out with respect. Our culture was built on respect. We respected that everything had a place, a reason, and a role in the great journey of life. Our ancestors knew their actions would be felt through space and time by their future generations. They understood that they could not take more than they needed and that they were a very important part of the web of life. Their connection to the world around them was honored every moment. They knew there would be consequences if there ever was a great disconnect. My name is Todd Labrador. Um, living outside of Bridgewater right now, but uh, I was born in 1960 and uh, grew up mostly on the Wildcat Reservation, uh, not far from Caledonia, Nova Scotia. Um, I've been working a lot with uh, natural resources and spend a lot of time out on the land and uh, harvesting uh, wood and you know for baskets or birch bark for canoes and digging roots and so I spend quite a bit of time in the woods and uh, see quite a bit of things that are going on in the woods. Over the last, uh, I guess, you know, 30, 40 years, um, noticed a lot of changes. When, when we were kids, harvesting birch bark with my father was pretty easy. Uh, he'd just take us out, um, and we'd, a certain time of the year, and uh, we could get birch bark come off very easy and very clean, very smooth, and uh, no, really no disease. It was uh, mostly just very clean, nice bark. Harvested at the right time of the year, um, or, you know, when we get summer bark, the, the bark would come off quite easy. We're offering tobacco, the spirit of the tree, that we can harvest this and harvest it safely and so that we can use the bark and the wood and the medicine um, to keep the tra traditions going. Build canoes and containers and uh, canoe paddles, things like that. So, uh, now for tobacco. We started seeing that uh, in July, when we should be getting full summer bark, and that's when the bark is completely uh, let go of the inner bark, the cambium, and when you when you open the bark up, it's wet inside, and it, it just pops right off as soon as you make the cut in the tree. It pops off. We start to see that in places on the tree, it wouldn't come off. Uh, it was still stuck fast, sort of like winter bark. So you get a tree that should be fully summer. Now it's starting to be in certain areas that that tree is not all summer. Sometimes it's like winter and a mixture of winter and summer. And um, so we started to notice things weren't weren't right or something wasn't right. Because we have a deep connection with Mother Earth. Through observation and being on the land, we have seen rapid changes in a very short amount of time. Climate change threatens us all. As all know, climate change threatens our livelihoods on water and land. 
Our ancestors were connected to the environment in such a way they were able to adapt to change. Change would happen over a period of time, over generations. Over the next few seasons, more and more trees uh, started to show a sign of something going on. And then we started getting summer, uh, winter bark in summer, which was really odd. So um, we, we really started to notice uh, things weren't working right, and it was challenging because we'd, we'd try, uh, we would try to, uh, we'd have to search for more trees because uh, you'd have to search and search and find that one tree that worked. And um, we were still able to get bark, um, but we did notice a change. And um, not sure just what it was, but it was definitely the bark was starting to um, uh, still stuck fast to the cambium in the summertime, which was not normal. Over five years ago now, there was one tree that I harvested. It was a big tree, had a group of people, and really thick bark, but probably 20 feet of the bark was completely diseased. It came off quite easy. Uh, but the inside of the bark was full of lumps and bumps. It was so bad that I could not use it for a canoe. Then we start seeing every now and then there are trees with, with part of this disease, or whatever it is, in 2021. Right in the beginning, in May, when I started to try to harvest uh, winter bark, it wasn't working. The winter bark wasn't coming off. It was, uh, there was something not right. And a lot of times you destroy the bark trying to get it off the tree. So I thought, well, we'll wait a little more and then in July, we can get summer bark. By then, it'll be easy to harvest. Well, I harvest through June. It was the same. The bark was very dry. Uh, there was no uh, moisture in it at all. And July, when we should get complete summer bark, and the inside of the bark, when you cut it, should be very wet. And our, our hands would turn orange from the dye because everything was so wet inside the bark. It never happened this year. Uh, we didn't get orange hands at all from the dye. The bark was very uh, dry, no moisture in there. And probably 95% of the trees that we harvested, or, or 98%, was complete disease and bumps and lumps all through the bark. So I don't see the disease going away. Uh, you know, from the trees that have the disease, I don't see it ever getting better. I think it'll die in that tree. Uh, maybe in the future, the new growths that come up, maybe won't have it. Uh, Melissa and I did find a few trees last summer that really didn't have much disease. Uh, two or three trees, you know, out of hundreds. That's all we found that didn't have much of the disease and it and it did act a little bit normal. Uh, something's not right in in the environment. Uh, something has caused this disease, but I don't know if it had happened before because I haven't really heard of it ever. And uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm born in 1960, so first time I ever really harvested bark was with my father probably around 1970 and uh, we've never seen anything like that. Musqui, the birch tree, is more than canoes or wigwams. It provides us with food, medicine and connections to our ancestors. As our climate changes around us 
and the health of not only our birch trees is compromised. It is more important now that we share these traditional skills and honor our traditional ecological knowledge. It's with that knowledge we will find a way forward.